videos about how to create the mannequin form figure. Um, and our unit, our next exercise, I should say, is going to be to go from the mannequin form figure to a figure that is more lifelike, that you can actually create a cutout cardboard figure from that doesn't have all the bumps um, that the joints create, but actually has more of a skin line where you can see the figure form. And then from here, this would be uh, the types of figures that you can then use to trace in your sketchbook. That's not that one. Um, but you can trace in your sketchbook and then actually create fashion for. So you can see that this is the figure that I originally traced and then developed um, an outfit idea from that. Here's another one. Eventually your assignment is going to be to trace uh, two figure forms and create a front and a back of the same outfit. So this is the one that was on that one. So you'll need to create a front and back. You can see this is the front of the outfit and there's the back of the outfit. Um, and then from there we'll be of course be using the micron pen that you can see used here and then we'll be doing color pencil rendering um, on our image to create the color values. And I just want to show you some student work from that. Um, here's one. So you can put both images on one uh, page together so you can have both. You can do them individually as well. Some students like to do both of them together. Here's another student work. You can see the front and back. And then here's a one that was done on two pages. And it didn't get finished, but you can at least get the idea of the front and back of the garment. Um, we'll be learning a lot about color pencil and how to create the shadows and values. Um, but for now, we're just going to focus on trying to get to the point where we actually have um, the figure that might have been, yeah, the figure that can be used in there. I'll admit this one is a design that I did. The other one, these are legitimately student work. Um, so you can see that this figure was used actually for both. For both, so um, so that's the front and back of one garment. Um, these students did them on one piece, and you can see theirs as well. So we're going to start off with looking at our mannequin form and how can we get to this to the point where we're cutting it out of cardboard. So the first thing we need to do is establish a skin line or a smooth line around the figure. Now, if you just trace around it, you would have this big bump for the neck, which we don't have as a human. So we want to kind of clean up the shape and give the person a more of a natural neckline. Come around, make sure that you're not tracing the ins and outs of those, um, like the, the uh, ball and stick shapes that are present. Um, you want to make sure that you're smoothing it out so that you can create a more natural form for our figure. Now, some of the figures you're going to have some internal shapes like that where this is actually cut out of the opening rather than just cutting around the exterior. Um, this one has two shapes that are actual holes in the shape. Um, we'll talk more about how to get those cut appropriately because we do have a tool for that. Um, just make sure that when you're thinking about the shape of the body, think about the calf, the ankles. Um, Make sure that you're considering the outside shape of the limbs so that you don't end up just tracing around the, the, the circle shapes because they are not naturally formed then. But think about the calf, calf shape, especially an ankle shape. I think a lot of students get confused about those and end up making um, kind of very lumpy, lumpy ankles and lumpy knees. We don't need that. So I'm almost done with my skin line here. And I'm just doing a nice smooth line around the exterior shape. And I always tell students that to create a nice silhouette shape, which is basically what this is, we can't see where that hand is. It could be in a pocket, could be just placed behind the back. Same with this one, it could be in a pocket or a hand on a hip. Um, you're not going to see some of the parts of the figure. Um, so it's important that, um, that you consider the, the pose. Some poses are going to work better than others. For example, um, if I was going to use one where the body is turned like this one, for example, this would not be a great pose because I would have to I would have this 
shape cut out. This would be like a lump on the side. The other arm's not showing. So that one would probably not be a great one to, uh, to cut out. This one also, because you'd be hiding a lot of the fashion you're trying to draw and show um, with the arm across the body and across the front. Um, and it would be very hard to remember where exactly those limbs were placed. So this would be a much harder pose to, to work with. Um, some would be, like that one would be okay, you could show the side of a garment, but you may want to stick with ones where the arms are more to the side so that you can really get a chance to see um, the design of the body. But again, this one's pretty boring. This one could probably work, and sure, you could adjust that arm if you want to have it more on the hip um, so that you would have a chance to show more um, of, the, of the design of your garment, because that's obviously what this is about, is creating a, a sketch that will work with the garment design. So if this is the one that I'm gonna use, and I, I like the skin line that I've just put on there, I feel like that looks pretty strong. Um, then I need to go to the box and choose a width of cardboard, and there's different colors um, that will fit. Now obviously this one is not gonna fit my figure. This one, nope, see it's still, I've still got three parts that are sticking out. I don't even think I can angle it to fit it all. So nope, this one won't work either. But the widest thickness definitely fits the whole figure on there. So that one would be a good one for me to use. And I also have, so you don't have to draw it again, I also have transfer paper. This one got bent a little. Um, and this is reusable. You can see that there's some drawings that were already used for this one. You can use it over and over and over. So I'm going to be using this transfer paper. Now there's a dirty side and a clean side. This is the side that will transfer the image to the board. So to start with, I'm going to single out my page, just the page that has the drawing on it that I want to use, so that that is the only page that I have sticking out. Underneath that, I'm going to position my cardboard, and I'm going to turn my graphite paper with the dirty side down on top of that. And then I'm going to position my figure on top of that, and I need to make sure that it's underneath the whole figure that the whole figure fits on there and I can feel the edge of the cardboard is here and here so that figure is fitting on there just fine and I have my carbon paper with the dirty side down and now I'm going to use just a regular ballpoint pen to transfer all of the lines so I want to make sure that I'm using just a regular ballpoint pen working right on directly on the tabletop um, so that I get it nice dark line. So I'm going to start at the top. to the board below and I've got one internal shape there that needs to get cut out and the way that that needs to happen is to use one of the cutting mats and an exacto blade the cap has a narrow side and a wide side Make sure that when you put this back on that you're lining up the narrow part of the blade with the narrow part of the cap so that you're not putting this in wide part to narrow part. It'll get stuck in there. And if the blade falls out, let me know because it's I can put it back in. It's not broken. Don't throw it away. Um, I can fix it. So I'm going to start by cutting out the enclosed shape. And you want to hold this just like you would a pencil with your finger on the grip section. 
You do not want to saw back and forth. You know, don't scratch back and forth. It's just kind of push it through and then pull towards you until the piece is uh, cut completely away. And that's how you can cut that part out. Now, the rest of this can be cut with scissors. So if you feel like you would prefer to cut with scissors, I think it's a lot safer. I think students tend to cut better when they're working with scissors because a lot of students do not have the hand grip to press hard enough to cut that cleanly and they end up with it looking like they chewed it out of the paper. So make sure that if you are not comfortable uh, cutting with the knife, don't use it, don't use the knife. I am going to, I'm going to cut with a scissor, but I am going to cut up into the parts that I know is going to be hard to get a scissor into. So up here in this armpit area, top of the legs, just because I know it's going to be harder to get a scissor in there. And make sure that's actually cut free. And then I am going to, in this part of the arm as well, because that'll be tough. Okay, so those are all loose. Now I could cut along the sides of the neck too. In fact, I probably will just go ahead and do that. So just the sides of the neck is all I need to, to cut there. So now I can cut the rest of this using a scissor which is a lot easier to control. And you're going to repeat this process for two figures. pieces into the recycle bin and I'm going to go ahead and then make my second one and then we'll talk in another video about how to then use this to create some fashion designs.